I want to welcome you to WMNF, Alejandra Borunda. You're a former climate scientist and author of the July cover story for National Magazine. It's called A Shady Divide. And the story is about how shade is important in U.S. cities and how climate change is uh, really affecting that. What can you tell us about climate change and about shade? Yeah, so shade is a really important part of many of our lives, right? It's the easiest way to cool yourself off on a hot day, like many of us are experiencing across the country right now. Um, and it turns out that shade is really unequally distributed across cities. And so people who live in neighborhoods that were formerly redlined that don't have a lot of access to trees and shade and other cooling areas are living in a world that's much hotter um, than people living in more wealthy and formerly unredlined neighborhoods. And as climate change continues, this disparity is only going to get more evident and more problematic. And you mentioned redlining. So what is redlining and how has that history affected shade and where people are living? So in the 1930s, uh, the federal government uh, instituted this policy that we now kind of colloquially refer to as redlining, um, when they literally drew red lines around certain neighborhoods um, that were home to a lot of black and brown folks and made it harder for people living in those areas to get federally backed housing loans. And this had really big impacts, um, not just at the time, but that have reverberated and lasted all the way through today um, in terms of the investment that gets put into those neighborhoods. And one of the clearest ways you can see that is often in the tree canopy um, and kind of the general comfortableness, I think of it as the, as the neighborhood. Are there places to sit? Are there places to get cool? Um, are there trees? And just to make it clear, the affluent and usually white neighborhoods are the places that do have trees and do have shade and the places that have historically been redlined that, that where maybe people of color live or poorer communities, these are places without shade. How does that make a difference to their well-being and health? Yeah, that's a really good question. There are a really clear on, on public health. Um, so one of the things that's really clear to researchers that places with more shade and trees are cooler, a lot cooler in some cases to, you know, 10 or even cooler. And so that's just a totally different, right? Like in the Northwest, for example, during this heat wave, a place that's 15 degrees hotter is going to be a lot harder for someone's body to deal with. Um, and we see that that outcome in, in the public health data. People who live in hotter neighborhoods tend to have a lot more hospitalizations during a heat wave or a heat event. Um, and so trees are one of these kind of very straightforward and simple ways in, in, in some respects to, to change the, the heat in a neighborhood. Um, and so places where there aren't that many trees just end up a lot, a lot hotter than ones that, that have more. Some cities are trying to do something about that by planting more trees, but there are barriers to that. What are some of those barriers and how can cities overcome that? Yeah, it's, I mean, this is a really one, one of those things that people call wicked problems, right? It's, it's, it's a tough thing to change. This has been really encoded in the physical space in which many of us live for, for decades, if not centuries now. Um, so planting trees is, is definitely one way to try to, to try to close the disparity a little bit and solve the problem. Um, but it takes a lot of effort and support from both communities and the cities themselves. Um, LA, where we spent most of our time, has a really, really active um, tree planting campaign. I know a lot of other cities across the country are at least talking about that as well. But it's, it's hard. It costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. Um, in cities like LA, in particular, there's a really tough thing to deal with just about cars. Um, it is a city of cars. A lot of trees were taken out to make space for either roads or parking. And so now we have to kind of contend with that whole history um, when finding places to plant more trees. 
This is WMNF Tampa. I'm Sean Canan, and my guest is Alejandra Borundo. She's a former client sci climate scientist and author of the July cover story for National Geographic magazine. The story is called A Shady Divide. You were just mentioning about cars and if cities are going to reor, if they were able to reorient from cars to pedestrians, that would really help the shade situation. How would that help? Yeah, so I think that's one of the, the things that I really hope that people <laughs> think about more now. Um, a lot of the physical spaces that, that we see in our cities are, are the way they are because we have prioritized cars for a really long time. Um, and now it is clear that that can't necessarily be the case in the future, or shouldn't be the case. Um, and so thinking about how to make pedestrian areas more comfortable is a really important part of the urban design project right now, I think, and has really important equity concerns. Like in LA, the places that are really hot are largely black and brown neighborhoods. And that's the places, those are the places where people have to be by. We spend a lot of time waiting for buses with people. We spend a lot of time walking around neighborhoods because that was the only way to get around. Um, and making those experiences more comfortable and less dangerous is a really important project. So moving away from just talking about shade, but looking at climate change in general, the climate disruption that's happening, what kind of futures can we expect in cities, whether there's shade or, or not enough shade? Yeah, so, so climate change is happening. It's happening now. We can see its impacts already on, on heat events across the country. Um, the Pacific Northwest is burning hot right now, um, and there's a pretty clear consensus that there's a climate change influence in, in that heat event. Um, so I think people who live in cities and in rural areas across the country need to be aware and be thinking about the fact that the heat waves we are going to see are going to get more intense, they're going to get longer, they're going to get more frequent. So the heat that we experienced in the past is not how, how things are going to be in the future. So anything we do to make that experience less bad for people is going to be really important. So shade isn't going to solve the problem, but it can make things a lot less bad in, in the worst of the times. And this question moves a little bit away from, from your article about shade and, and making people more comfortable in the cities. But what are some things that people can do uh, that can help alleviate the climate crisis? Always a good question. I always think that the one of the most important things that you can do is uh, get involved with your local community groups who are thinking about climate change and climate adaptation um, in particular. I know there's a lot in Florida. Um, yeah, get really aware of kind of what the the risks are for the future. It's sea level rise. It's it's heat. It's all kinds of compound of what we call compound events. So things happening at the same time um, and. There's a lot of local groups that have a really good pulse um, on what's happening and how you can help in your local areas. Well, Alejandra Burunda, thank you so much for joining us here on WMNF. You have the, you're the author of the July cover story for National Geographic magazine. It's called A Shady Divide. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's been great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.